I was visiting Norman, Oklahoma with a friend when I was about 24. We met a freaky guy with long black hair and a trench coat who asked us if we wanted to try something crazy. We said, sure. He said him and all his buddies had been eating the seeds out of these pods, they thought it was belladonna. We later identified it as datura. They started with some fairly high doses, such as all the seeds from two or three pods and had been working the dosage down with every new person they turned onto it. Apparently they'd had one mishap where someone had their stomach pumped, but no one had died. By the time we rolled up, they were down to about one half the seeds in a medium-sized pod per person. Apparently the black seeds in the more mature pods were stronger. So anyway, we go out to the university which is where this stuff is growing and we each pick some. Then we go back to this guy's apartment and open a couple pods. We take about a teaspoon of seeds each. Almost an hour later, I'm thinking that nothing is going to happen, but soon enough I'm starting to feel very sleepy so I go lay on the couch. My eyelids are very heavy and I fall into a deep sleep. It's about midnight. I'm having all kinds of crazy dreams which unfortunately I don't remember. All I can recall is that I'm driving really fast and I crash into something. At that moment, I wake up and realize that I'm sitting up on the sofa and it's already mid-morning. According to other people in the room who are not on Datura, I had actually been awake all night, eyes wide open. I have no idea what I did or said for those nine hours. My friend who also took some spent the entire night in the guy's bedroom digging through his sock drawer. He thought he was shopping in a thrift store. So, seeing now that I have woken up, I decide I've come down off the drug and immediately get up and leave the apartment. I go straight to my van and grab a bag of books, not mine, and a pair of shoes, also not mine, and start walking downtown with the items slung over my shoulder. I spend the next eight hours walking around downtown Norman with absolutely no idea where I am or where I'm going. I notice I'm incredibly thirsty so I start going into shops to find a cup of water. Several problems occur, such as whenever I try to talk to someone, I'm unable to move my lips or tongue so I just kind of mumble in a slurred way. People start to look at me funny. The guy at 7-Eleven asks who I'm talking to. When I point to the group of friends standing behind me at the counter, they've disappeared. In fact, all day long I'm followed around by friends who keep disappearing. Inanimate objects such as stop signs become robots. Trees and bushes become animals. There is a dark, sinister quality to the world I am in. Dot but also very earthy. Like the dark aspect of nature revealed. Everything is alive. I try to find my way back to the apartment, but I keep forgetting which town I'm in. I realize I'm in the lower height in San Francisco so I start walking towards the bus bus stop. But, no. Dot now I'm in Lawrence, Kansas and this is the way to my friend's house. I turn the corner and I'm back in Norman. This goes on for a long time and I start to get very frustrated and I'm also feeling very lonely because all my friends keep disappearing. I can hear the wind blowing down the street and I feel like I'm in a ghost town. I come to a giant stop sign robot and try to ask him what to do. He just stands there and acts as if he can't hear me. I notice my spine and up through the back of my neck is sore. At this point I've walked up and down the street for many hours and I'm feeling very tired. I give up and go to sit down on some steps. I put down the bag of books and the pair of shoes I've been carrying over my shoulder all day and decide that I'm just gonna sit here until someone comes to pick me up. Within moments of finishing this thought, a car stops along the curb in front of me and a woman gets out. Hey, you need a ride? You look really lost. I immediately accept the ride, and I notice my thoughts are coming back to me. We start driving and I'm remembering how to get back to the apartment. At this point I can talk clearly, I'm coming down. I'm already feeling much better and I have a nice conversation with the woman. We find the apartment and I thank her for the ride. Later, I find my friend who has been deliriously running all over the place just like me. We notice that we can't focus our eyes on anything close up. Strangely, I feel invigorated and full of energy, I'm actually in a good mood. My overall impression is that Datura dissolves the boundary between dream and reality. In essence, you're in a waking dream. Dot but the dream is under the power of a strange, dark force. In contrast to LSD, DMT, ketamine it is a very earthy and organic feeling, very old and full of possible danger. I feel as though I was being looked after and protected. I crossed the street a dozen times throughout the day but always with the traffic signals and the girl giving me the ride was too synchronistic. I also looked in a pawn shop that day while I was deep under the influence and saw a Roland 808 drum machine which I went back the next day and bought for $175. They're worth $900.
So in a way, the experience was beneficial. A friend of mine who was with us takes a whole bag of the pods back to Oklahoma City and doses a bunch of kids at this party we go to. I see mumbling, delirious kids all over the place and I'm thinking, this is probably a bad idea, but I never hear about anyone getting hurt or poisoned. I decide I don't ever need to take Datura again, except maybe in combination with some other plant, such as mushrooms. I'm curious Abu T traditional uses of Datura in ceremonial mixtures. It's heavy shit. If I knew then what I've since read about other people's experiences, I probably wouldn't have taken it. Dot but the whole situation was just so off the hook, I'm kind of glad it happened.